Still podcast. I have the wife with me. Hello. And today we got Joe Rogan talking with Reggie Watts. And then we also have Joe Rogan talking with two gentlemen who are into the paranormal. And uh, what Joe Rogan is talking to them about has to do with alien abductions. What he's talking to Reggie, uh, Reggie Watts about has to do with alien abductions. Reggie Watts has his own alien experience that he's going to talk about. Joe Rogan is regaling these young men with one of the top alien abduction stories, which we're going to go a little deeper into. Two clips. We're going to get that done. Soul Not For Sale. Don't forget, Soul Not For Sale. We got all of that at IamCoachColin.com. Go and check it out. And if you want 10% off, put in the discount code IamCoachColin. All capital letters, all one word. One L in the name, Colin, gets you 10% off. Now, let's get into this first clip. You ready? Yeah, let's do it. Let's do it. Like infrared, you know. I don't, I don't fucking know, man. I mean, it really blows me away. I keep, because I can't say, I can't say for sure. Like, I believe that, that other life forms exist. Um, I also believe, I just don't know if it's like, it doesn't make any sense why they're like, let's just hang out, never show ourselves, and just do like really cool, tricky stuff and have people get a bunch of blurry images of it that we can never fucking see. Yeah. That's, that's the weird thing. But I don't know what it is, man. I mean, it's either natural phenomenon. Or it's something that's been here a long time, um, or they're probes uh, from that are triggered by a certain I don't know technological ex escalation in human society, or they're somehow ours. But that doesn't make any sense either. I don't know, man. I mean, I've seen them. I've seen I've seen UFOs, but you I've, have? I've, I've, yeah, I, I might have mentioned it on the show before. But I've seen like the classic like three glowing spheres in the distance, kind of moving along, and like a searchlight turning on or a spotlight turning on, turning off, and then like gliding with no noise in a canyon. I've, I've seen that. But, and that was awe inspiring. But, you know, some of the footage that you see, you're like, that is, what is that? It just went into the ocean. It just mm. went into the ocean at the same, it's still traveling at the same rate that it was traveling in the air. And they're, they're recording it. So it's either like a huge hoax, which doesn't make any sense because people talk, or they're, I don't know, man. Or it's like interdimensional shit. Mm. It's, uh, uh, maybe if we are in a simulation, there are like glitches in the simulation, you know, like there's like other things bleeding through and like we're seeing things that don't have any, um, that don't, that don't um, adhere to the laws of physics because they aren't really in our physical realm in a way. I don't, I don't really know. Cause I, I just, it, it really, it baffles me. And then also when the, the government starts releasing stuff and then you got a guy going around like, well, you know, I've been cleared by the, you know, whatever the CIA or whatever to be able to talk about this and all this stuff. Like you've been cleared to talk about stuff that you're supposed to not be talking about is a weird, that's weird. And then I'm like, is it propaganda? Is it like, I don't know, man. It's, it's a, it's a tough one. Cause I grew up like, I love UFOs. Like I grew up project blue book, watched the series, loved aliens. Used to sit in my backyard, looking up the stars, hoping that I would see an alien one day. And then I did see not aliens, but I saw U UAPs or UFOs. Where were you when you saw that? I was in Montana. I was like probably 17. Yeah. And uh, it was, we were camping and uh, at, at night, and then we decided to, to climb a butte in the middle of the night, so we were crossing a big cattle field. And then I was walking, and two friends were ahead of me, and I kind of just looked to my right, stopped, looked to my right, and I just saw these in the distance. I don't know how far it would be, but like you know, they looked like about that big from my perspective. So down a ways, and there were three of them. It wasn't one object because they, changed, they would change distance from each other and change elevation a little bit, really low. And then at some point, sometimes it would just stop, and you'd see a little beam, turn on, turn off, and then it would start to move again. It was really, really weird. I had two friends. I I kept looking at it. I was like, come here, because I didn't want to not look and then look back, and then they weren't there type of movie shit. But my friends came back, and they looked down, and they, they described. I didn't even tell them what I was looking at. I said, tell me what you see. They described what I was seeing. I don't know what it was. Wow. But I've heard other stories about three lights, um, same kind of shit. I, I, when I'm watching like UFO, whatever documentary stuff, it gave me chills, because I'm like, I've seen that. Whatever that is, I've mm. seen that. So I don't know. I don't know, man. It's like I go, my mind goes all over the place, but there's no definitive. No, because no one's, you know, it's like unless they land and you're like, oh, right. there it is. Or we see not the Mexico City alien. Right. <laughs> like, <laughs> obviously a joke. Um, not a joke, but whatever a it was. Hoax. A hoax. Yeah. Like unless we get something where it's like, oh, shit, what is that? What is this metal? Or, you know, the scientists saying that they found a piece of a, an alien ship at the bottom of the ocean because mm -hmm. it's material they can't identify. Um I don't know. It's it's weird. I'm excited about it. I think it's kind of interesting and I'm hopeful, but it's almost like the more information that gets released, the more I'm like, I don't know what to think. I'm exactly where you are. Yeah. But I, I think more than likely that a lot of what we're seeing, a lot of these people are seeing yeah. is some sort of top secret probe. Mm. With some sort of super sophisticated propulsion system that doesn't rely on a combustion engine. 
some completely new style of propulsion system that they've been working on. They've been working on gravity propulsion systems since the 1950s. True. They've been at least theorizing these things. And the, the possibility that someone has come up with something in a drone form mm -hmm. that they can pilot like that makes the most sense to me because they keep spotting these things in areas where the military practices. They keep spotting these things True. off the coast of San Diego, off the East Coast, where they have these these uh, restricted areas, that's where they're seeing these things. Like, it just makes sense that that would be where they would practice these things. But what's weird about it is that, you know, like there was that famous UFO crossing incident over the, the northern, all the uh, states of going from, I think, Seattle or Washington all the way to Idaho, Montana, North Dakota. They were chasing the squadron of unidentified flying objects in this? the 50s. The 50s. 50s. Yeah. So that's the one thing that cause right. you, you do hear about sightings, like even in the 1800s, uh -huh. you know, 1700s. That's the weird thing. Right. That's the, that's the thing where I'm like, well... If it's true, but I mean, in the fifties, I mean, there's like shots of it. There's people took photographs of mm -hmm. these like squadron of glowing yeah. discs and they were kept and they were going so fast that jets couldn't keep up with them. So I had to scramble jets at the next base and they, mm -hmm. our baseball team is called, are called the Voyagers based off of that incident. Really? Yeah. So, I mean, in Great Falls, but like, I don't know that that's the weird thing about it. I mean, I do, I agree with you. I think there is some kind of like propulsion system and that, you know, is able to like change on a dime and like doesn't necessarily get affected in the way that normal. So there's probably multiple things going on simultaneously. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. I, I do not doubt that we've been visited. If there is intelligent life yeah. that's capable of coming here from somewhere else, of course they would. I mean, well, that's the place you would go. I, I, yeah, exactly. I mean, it's like, it seems like in a way, I just feel like the earth is kind of like a, a, a terrarium. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's like, it's like, they're just like, let's do a t pilot program here, throw some seeds down yeah, there sure. monitor it see how it goes certainly could be i mean some people think the moon is a spaceship well <laughs> those people might be dumb well <laughs> <laughs> those people might be dumb that's, <laughs> that's an interesting one but you know what i don't think it's that dumb i keep but i've always said this. Spaceship? i always say that you know what would be the best spaceship? Like the best thing to have, if, if you were a planet, you'd be inside of the planet and you'd have that planet fly around. That way, if you know anything wants to come and discover you, they'll just be on the surface. You can know where they are, eliminate them if need be, yeah. and just keep on moving. And then when people come and they're like, who, who, get, who got our guys? It's like, oh, it's just this weird dirt planet that's flying around, <laughs> you know? True. I don't know, I don't know. That's how, that's wouldn't you want to? I think I have no idea. Maybe you'd want a spaceship like that, shaped like the moon. Like why not? I guess it would blend in. Right. I was gonna say it's not very aerodynamic, but it doesn't matter in space because there's no air. Well, there's that, and also if you wanted to then view a planet, you could, like like right now, if the moon was a spaceship, we would just be like, it's the moon. Yeah. It's always been there. True. But for them, it's like. They don't know we're here because they just think we're the moon. <laughs> <laughs> so we True. just get to watch them and we're it's just very sneaky. They think we're just some boulder thing that surrounds this flies around them and only shows them one side all the time. Yeah, exactly. Smart. You know, never spins around. Nothing just chills. True. You know? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> weird. weird. Weird, weird, weird. But alien abductions, alien stories. Mm -hmm. I'll share my alien story real quick. Oh, I don't know. Yours. I don't know if it was an alien story, but for sure, I remember, you know, we used to smoke a lot back in the day, but it couldn't have been that, right? And I verified. We were in a building. I looked out on the balcony, and there was this crazy, weird, green, shimmering stuff. And it was like in the sky. It was very weird. And I was like, oh, I've smoked too much. That's what's going on. And I said, yo, yo, get over here, get over here. I'm like, what do you see? And he's like, that's crazy. I'm like, no, 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 but say it. What do you see? What do you see? He's like, the green stuff. It's like in the sky. And I was like, what is that? Hmm. And we just watched it for like five minutes. And it wasn't like Northern Lights? I, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. It, like, it was daytime. Oh, that's weird. That's the thing. It wasn't it's night. it's still possible. I guess. I don't know. I, that's the closest thing I have Yeah. to an alien story. To, that is weird. Because we it, don't get Northern Lights here. Well... <sighs> It's not really. It's the daytime. Yeah. <laughs> it's the daytime. That, that's so associated with the night unless you're like in Alaska or something. Or like, like, I don't know. I don't know. Unless you're in one of those places. But it's not a daytime city thing. True. It's just not. I, I don't know. As far as I know. I've mm -hmm. never asked an expert about it or anything. But that's as close as I got. But we're also getting into another Joe Rogan clip. But 
first, we're going to get into the article that we have. Hmm. Let's get into that. What do you got there? I want you to read off the first one. I'm going to pull it up on the screen for the folks. Yeah, these are the uh, top six most famous alien abduction stories. So we can I, talk about all of them. I love alien abduction stories, people. Yeah, just so you know. It's, it's my favorite thing. Mm-hmm. Six most famous abduction stories. I really do love it because I really do feel like aliens are very real. I think they're among us. I think they've visited countless times. I think it's very possible we're a product of that. Hmm. But I don't want to give into that as well. Because when you give into that notion, you're kind of giving away your divineness. You know, as a child of God and <laughs> as a divine being, you give yeah. it away when you're like, oh, I'm just some alien experiment. Alien byproduct. And you don't want to give that away. You know what I mean? Keep your soul. Hmm. What's the first one? It says the Antonio Villas Boas abduction. Read about that. One of the earliest studied cases happened in Brazil when a farmer in the 1950s claimed a spacecraft emitting a very bright light landed on his family's farm. He continued to see the strange object until one night when it took him and left some disturbing evidence of alien experimentation. The farmer claimed the alien beings brought him on their ship to impregnate a rather fetching looking female and described everything from the ship to his suitor in great detail. Hmm. Weird. When he returned, he claimed the incident produced symptoms such as nausea, loss of appetite, headaches, and even bruising. Oh. Investigators have differed on their conclusions, but the differing outcomes only gave more credibility and notoriety among believers and skeptics alike, especially the believers who are praying for an interstellar hookup of their own. <laughs> That's gross. <laughs> Well, you know what? We're going to be showing you another Joe Rogan clip in a second because he's going to explain number two Hmm. for everybody. But that sounds pretty wild. And I don't see why that wouldn't happen. It sounds so silly when you say a farmer and a fetching lady. But imagine, um, imagine, say, like a chimpanzee that gets dropped back into the rainforest. Yeah. And it's like, where'd you go? Chip, chip, where'd you go? You've been gone for so long, Chip Chip. Chip Chip's like, man, they put me in this place with all these other female chimpanzees. <laughs> and they said I had to be with all of them. They were all my wives. You'd be like, Chip Chip, you're crazy. <laughs> what are you talking about? And it was there was no trees. There's no trees. The bananas were huge for some reason. And all the other apes were skinned. They were pink. <laughs> pink apes. And they could talk. <laughs> Some of them wore glass on their face. Glass it's very face. weird. You know? I took that to mean like an alien female. Oh, you think so? Yeah. No way. Why would he say fetching? I don't know. How would you know it's hot? Unless it had the same type of body. I don't know. But just green. He no, just I'd... said to impregnate a rather fetching looking female. Nah, it's a woman. It's a woman. I guess. He would have had, this would have been a way bigger story if he was like, it was a green female with four eyes and three chest parts, <laughs> two private parts. Yeah, I think it just made me think that at the end where it said, especially the believers who are praying for an interstellar hookup. Well, I mean, it's interstellar because you're doing it in space. It's like yeah. the Mile High Club times a thousand. <laughs> you know? Yeah, I guess. Who doesn't want that? <laughs> it's very strange. But that that that's his name. Look this look that name up. Antoine Villas Boas. Antonio. Antonio Villas Boas. Abduction. See if you could find anything slightly more about him. I should do that too. But let's go to we're gonna go to number two. Because we're gonna have Joe Rogan actually explain this one. This is a very interesting one because this is actually the first one. This what is do the, you mean? It's the first one. You know how there's many of these stories? Mm-hmm. This was the first. Oh. In, in modern times, I should say. In modern times. Hey, check out that story that we just read, how he's talking about bruising. Okay, I'll look it up. No, I'm just saying, like, we read it. He was talking about bruising. Yeah. How do you get bruised? What were they doing to him? I don't know. That's interesting. That's very interesting. And... <laughs> Just to think of these aliens, like, all right, get over here. They're grabbing mm-hmm. them, making them do things. It's very odd. That is strange. Nah, I can't see much on it, but you can you can look that up. I'm gonna I'm gonna roll over to number two here, and we got 
the Barney and Betty abduction story. Now, this is a clip from the History Channel, and we have a terrible history with the History Channel. Mm -hmm. They do not like our channel whatsoever. They're constantly trying to give us copyright strikes and stuff. I have to fight them in YouTube court all the time. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to stay away from their stuff. But I have a Rogan clip for you instead, which is way better. A hundred times better. So let's get over to the Rogan clip real quick. You remember that? Every time we would do a video, it was History Channel. They'd yeah, be like, true. nope. True. Sorry. Every single time. It's ridiculous. Absolutely ridiculous. All right. We got a Rogan one here. Let's do that instead. And you can let me know whatever you pull up. All right. You mm -hmm. ready? Yep. All right. Let's do it. Turn it up. Used to have it on the desk here. Oh, it's over there. That guy right there. This guy is Travis. Oh, this is this is actually Travis Walton, who's also on the list. Oh, listen to this story, though. This is an odd story. This isn't Barney and Betty. I should have. Uh, OK, OK. I know what I'm doing. But this is Travis Walton. <laughs> listen to this one. This is actually really good. It's Walton. And uh, he's got his own bobblehead now. Man's got to make a living. <laughs> Let's, go. Uh, Let's go. He was in <laughs> he was in this. Uh, this movie uh, called Fire in the Sky. I don't know if you ever heard of it. It's Never. a UFO abduction story, but it's a very famous abduction story because there was a, a bunch of eyewitnesses and there was witnesses that saw the spacecraft that were in the town. He was a logger in Arizona and uh, he had, uh, including people that hated him uh, who, who backed up his story. So they saw something, and this area where they were logging, there had been sightings, like multiple sightings of UFOs in, in the past. Mm -hmm. And uh, they saw something go through the sky and into the trees, and they pulled the truck over. This guy, Travis Walton, who was a young guy at the time, he's in his early 20s, jumps out of the car, runs over to this thing, and there's a, a flying saucer, like a classic flying saucer that's hovering over the ground Whoa. it was like a flying saucer right is that how he described it i believe yeah. anyway he runs up gets too close to this thing a burst of energy hits him like he he, he got too close to it or something gets yeah. knocked down the other guys run they're terrified now. They run, they get in the car, they drive off. And then they're screaming and yelling at each other as they're driving off. Like, we got to go back and get him. We can't fucking leave him there. Yeah. So they go back. They go back to the same spot. He's gone. He disappeared for five days. And what's like five days? I hope I'm not fucking this up. So five days later, he shows up in town, calls, calls someone on a cell phone, calls the police, Tells them his story. These recordings of him calling the police and telling his story. No one knows what happened to him. He five days, no food, no water. And his story was that they took him aboard this spaceship and repaired him. That he got damaged by this burst of energy that came off of this spaceship. And that they, they repaired him and that he communicated with these beings. And these beings are what everybody describes as these classic gray aliens these things mm. with these big heads and these large eyes and then there was different types of creatures that were on this spaceship too but that poor fucking guy for the rest of his life now he's like in his 60s maybe 70s and that's him he came on the podcast very nice guy but now he's the fucking wacky UFO guy for the rest oh, of his man. life. Like Travis Walton could have been a normal guy mm -hmm. yeah. and had a normal life and never experienced that. Like, would you rather be the person who has the unique experience that nobody believes or never have that experience? I want to be the guy. I want to be the guy that has the experience. So you personally know? Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, you know, everybody else will know, too. Some people will believe me. There's a lot of people that believe this guy. I believe that story. When I hear that story, I'm like, yeah, that makes sense. If hmm. we, if we, here's the thing. Here's the thing that people don't, I'm going to get to, uh, I'm going to get to the Betty and Barney one right now. Uh, but that was Travis Walton. Uh, but let's just say we get to the point where we can travel to other planets. Mm -hmm. But we're new. We're new to it. So we come down. We're like hanging low. There's like one of these things runs at us and we're like, oh, my God. And we're just trying to poof, and then we hit it and we're like, oh, my God, you can't hit these things. <laughs> they just told us we can't hurt any of these things. They're like, OK, get him aboard. OK, repair him like he's a panda. Like, you know, just uh, stitch him up and, uh, like he's a monkey. Like he's like, you know, like mm -hmm. anything, you know, like we could do that with a with a swan right now. If there was a sw 
We do that all the time. If there's a duck covered in oil because of something we did, true, a bunch of we people get together and, and we're like, oh, yeah. And the duck's just like, what the hell is happening right now? <laughs> <laughs> we're just like, got to clean them. Oh, let's get them going. Throw them back in the water. It's fine. And then we disappear. And he's like, oh, my God, no one's going to believe me. <laughs> These things had their hands all over me. But you know what I mean? If we were new to it. Yeah. Right? Because we're kind of, you know, given the whole time of the earth, we're new to shipping large amounts of oil across the oceans. True. So what happens? There ends up being accidents. I, I would assume the same thing would happen with space travel. Elon Musk shoots a rocket into the air. The, the first three of them, I think, blew up. Like, he didn't get it right the first time. Yeah. You know? So it's like, maybe these guys who got this guy were just new to it. They just <laughs> messed up. Funny. Just newbie aliens. Yeah. They're just... Because everybody assumes that the aliens that you'd encounter are going to be thousands of years ahead of you. Tens of thousands of years ahead of you. But maybe they're just like 50. <laughs> They're just like, we just figured it out. And we heard you guys. You guys sent out a thing. There was a time capsule. We found it. And we just wanted to see if he still existed. <laughs> and you do. Look at this. You know? Mm -hmm. You never know. You never know. They could just be new. We just, we always assume that we're either drastically more intelligent than everything else. Or we assume we're like apes that are just like silly and they're like we're, we're tadpoles. Yeah, true. You know? It's all like one or the other. Yeah. Not that there's other things kind of like us. We could just be on par. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Like right now there could be a planet that's just on par. You know? And they have their Elon Musk. And he's like, we're going to go to the other planet. We're going to go to <laughs> Glip Glop. We're going to go to Glip Glop. I'm taking you guys to Glip Glop. And they're like, sure, man. Glip Glop. Okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm fine here on Schmork. Thank you very Schmark, much. Planet Schmork. <laughs> <laughs> but what would you rather? Would you rather have the experience or not have the experience? I think not. Really? Yeah. But I would believe you. I know. And I was thinking that too. Like, I would believe you. Right? I don't But have I no still problem. don't. Like, I don't know if. I personally would want that experience. Oh, 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 like the like whole thing. Like, I feel thing. like it would be scary. Yeah, it would. It would be traumatizing, right? Exactly. And then you're traumatized for the rest of your life versus true. just not going through it. Yeah, that's true. And then you don't know what's going to happen either. What do you mean? If they're going to come back? No, like during your abduction. Yeah. Like you don't know what they're going to do to you. Yeah, true. So it's like, I guess you don't know what level of trauma it's going to be, but it's going to be some kind of trauma. Yeah, so I opt to not have any. True. Because it's either they're going to be like, hey, we got this chick and we just want to see you guys. Or they're going to be like, your arm's off, but don't worry. We're good. We know how to yeah. we know how to reattach it. Don't worry. It's going to it's gonna hurt, I guess, because you still have pain. Don't worry. It's going to do this five seconds. We're yeah. going to get your arm back on. Or more like the classic stories of like they Probing. like. Yeah. <laughs> You're just like on a table. Like that's like scary. Yeah, that is actually crazy it's just about. freaky you just don't know what they're gonna do and he communicated with them this guy said hmm. this travis gentleman he communicated with them somehow which yeah, makes perfect sense think about think about what we have right now like when people are at the un when they're at the un and they're talking and putin's talking in russian they all have a thing in their ear so they oh, can all the understand yeah true right so just extrapolate that technology to more languages <laughs> in more places and then all of a sudden it's like you know maybe it's not a thing that's in your ear but it's a thing that's in the room so now when you have this chimpanzee human type thing you're, you're able to communicate it with it effortlessly yeah you have your neural link in it's attached to the room it's translating everything you're talking to them through your mind i don't know yeah true it's, it's possible <laughs> there's a lot of things that are possible hmm. <laughs> so like I'm going to I'm going to play that one soon. But uh go go to the Travis Walton one in that yeah. article mm -hmm. and just read that off. See if there's anything that Rogan left out. The curious case of this northern Arizona logger isn't just one of the most notorious alien abduction tales. It also became one of the most lucrative. Oh. Walton and his fellow loggers were driving home late from work one night down a dirt road when they noticed a strange glow just over the horizon of the trees. They approached the source of the light and discovered a large fluorescent object in the shape of a diamond beaming down a column of light. 
Walton wanted to get a good look at it for himself and stepped into the light, thinking whatever was making it would just fly away. Instead, the light grew stronger, picked up Walton about three feet off the ground, and threw him down, knocking him unconscious. His friends sped away in fear for their lives, but decided to go back and get him, only to find an empty clearing with no sign of their friend. (laughs) <laughs> Police suspected foul play at first, but five days later, Walton turned up at a gas station in another town more than 30 miles away. He remembered the abduction and the interior of the craft before he blacked out and woke up in the gas station. Some claim the story was a fake, even suggesting Walton was intentionally given a hallucinogen, but hmm. the story sparked a wildfire in the media, leading to a best selling book and movie called Fire in the Sky. Hmm. Huh. I wonder. Mm-hmm. I wonder. It was it was very lucrative. I wonder mm-hmm. if it was like lucrative for him. I guess he would have sold his story at some point. Yeah, I guess he would have had to sell it, especially for the movie. He would have to be there. He would have to help them recreate the scenes and everything. Yeah. I mean, you'd, you'd imagine, but, you know. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. And then a book. The book is obviously him as well. Yeah. So. Like a ghostwriter. Or so he made a bunch of money. But just because yeah. someone makes money doesn't mean their story's fake. That's true. Right? Some people are just smart. Yeah. You know? Some people go through it and they just go nuts and they stay in their house. And other people are like... Might as well. Yeah. How am I going <laughs> to make some money? It's so funny. It was all the way back in this time. And Joe's like, he got on a cell phone and he called town. And... Yeah, it doesn't say what year it is. So I don't really know. I don't... I'm pretty sure it was a little ways back. Because Fire in the Sky came out... I wouldn't say a while ago, but a little while ago. Hmm. Uh-uh. That's just me. Yeah, I grew up a little poor, so I didn't see a cell phone until like 2000. I get they they were around beforehand, but I I had no access to them. 1975. That's when it happened. Yeah. Yeah. There's no cell phones, unless the aliens gave them one. They're like, hey, buddy, call your friends. Mm. They just flew away. And it's weird because it, like, I just Googled Travis Walton and it pops up, like, on the right. You know how for famous people gives, like, a little summary? Yeah. And it says movie actor. Ooh. So that's a bit weird. Maybe this is just one deep predictive programming thing. I don't know. They just set it up years and years ahead of time. Or maybe he just, like, wrote the story with his buds for a movie. Ooh. And then set up some light. And then he didn't ref- even have to set up the light. Just well, had to. No, no, no. He did. He did actually because I didn't play it because he has such this long, drawn out way of talking. But there was a clip of him talking about it. And he says that there's hunters and other people in the mm, area that could who, saw, who saw the same light. Interesting. Weren't near it. Didn't go towards it like he did. Mm-hmm. I feel like loggers would have lights. Yeah. Definitely. For it to light up th- what they're doing. Yeah, definitely. Okay. <laughs> you think it was just loggers? They just didn't I don't tell know. <laughs> they just stitched Well, he up. is a logger. Yeah. So he's already working in the woods. So he could have just set up like lights and whatever. And just ran. Because it is weird that he just ran towards it. Yeah. Not knowing what it is. Yeah. You just see he this just... beam of light and you just want to be in it. Yeah. Could you imagine? You're just with some people. And, like, you see a light, and then one of your friends just sprints off. You're like, bro, <laughs> where are you yeah. going? What are like you a doing? Toddler, just crazy. <laughs> like, bro, don't run towards that. He's like, I got to be at it like a moth. Yeah. Yeah. It's weird. Howie Mandel had an uh, alien experience as well. He doesn't mm. go into it in depth in this clip, but he touches on it a little bit. He says he was... Uh, He was north of uh, Toronto, and he had something happen. He doesn't go into it too much. He just saw some lights, and it was really weird. Hmm. But he does have a little bit of a story. And then Joe Rogan explains number two, which is Betty and Barney. Can you read that one really quick for me? Yeah. Betty and Barney. Sorry, I got a little wrapped up there, guys. I'm sorry. Hmm. Sorry about that. There have been many cases of alien abductions since the dawn of time or at least since psychiatric medications became more readily available and potent. That's dumb. Dumb commentary. But the most famous and first well-documented case goes to this couple of of Portsmouth, New Hampshire. They claimed in September of 1961 that as they were driving home from Montreal, Canada, a bright light jutted out of the nighttime sky on a dark road. 
As the light approached them, they could see bipedal humanoid creatures looking out the window of the spacecraft. Wait, is it this? Oh my god, it is. Okay. Montreal. (laughs) Wow. We're coming home from Montreal, yeah, to New Hampshire. The couple had no memory of the next two hours, but claimed they were returned to their car where damages to their clothes and shoes left evidence of their spacey encounter. Hmm. The incident made the two famous overnight and turned Betty into the nation's first UFO hunter. The state of New Hampshire also recognized the legend with an official historical marker on the 50th anniversary of the of the abduction. That's interesting. Yeah. That's weird. That's, That's very weird. weird. See, again, it's it's possible for people to make it up, but at the same time, like, what do you do? Like when it's like together as well, like the husband and the wife. And the thing about it is, and I'm going to let Joe Rogan explain this, is that they didn't just come home talking about this experience. They actually didn't fully, they didn't fully Mm. remember. So here, let me just play this. Joe Rogan will explain it. Mm, Not really that fast. Well, more importantly than the speed you know, it, that's what I saw. I saw something. For me, it was just lights at night, and they moved. Your at, thing, uh, but that's my different. thing. But that's not. The, but this is but something your thing you can't sounds explain. Like it moved way faster than that. It did. Yeah, it did. It, I've never seen anything disappear like that. And more importantly, I have a witness. Yeah, I was sitting there at the same time, and we didn't. We were driving because we thought it was a big accident. Maybe there was a train uh, crash or something. Were so there we were other going people on the it. highway. No, it was just me and her about midnight, and wow. it was in a like a north of Toronto. We were heading up north, but she'll tell you the same story, and we're both not, you know. Do you know the Betty and Barney Hill story? No. That's an amazing story. It's one of the very first UFO abduction stories, and I think it was from 1950s, somewhere around then. Betty and Barney Hill, I believe they were in Maine, and um, something happened to them, and they saw something in the sky, and then they had all these terrors and night night terrors and uh, like weird f- feelings. And then they got hypnotic regression, and during the hypnotic regression, they both told a, a very eerily similar story about being taken aboard this craft, about experiments being done on them, and then being put back in their car and having their memories at least partially erased. It was only accessible to them when they when they did hypnotic regression. Very controversial, but it's it's also so, like, it was one of the very first depictions of these beings that are uh, kind of, it's a part of the iconic alien-looking thing, like, that everybody seems to see, a very similar creature, a very small creature with very big head, very big eyes, and that these, these folks had an experience with them. It's more amazing to me that it isn't widely accepted with how many exper- yeah. experiences Experiences have been written about, have been documented, even by military pilots yeah. and, and Barney and his wife. Well, don't you think there's more people that accept it now? Like Michio Kaku talks about it now openly, whereas Michio Kaku is a very like straight-laced physicist who his entire career is just advocated based on science and evidence, and and he's very rational and he's a great communicator. But now he's turned the corner. Where he says the amount of evidence that is available now, the evidence now, the side of the critic is the one that has very little evidence. He thinks the side of the believer, there's, there's a, a, a vast amount of data that seems to indicate that there's some things out there that we really don't understand. Except the... Hmm. Interesting. That's crazy. See, so they didn't actually know. They actually had to go into this uh, hypnotic regression type of thing. Yeah, because they then, kept having night terrors. Yeah, and then they figured it out from there. Hmm. That is weird. weird. That's weird. And his husband and a wife, and they have like the same story. Mm-hmm. That's crazy. Right? I don't know. What do you think about that one? I don't know. That one I believe more than the Travis Walton one. Really? Because they didn't like benefit anything from it. That's true. That is true. They did not. They did not benefit at all. In fact, their granddaughter is a uh, a UFC fighter. No, really? I don't know if her contract is still in the UFC. Her name's Angela Hill. But um, Joe Rogan interviewed her one time. Hmm. I remember I was watching the episode and it's like... four or five minutes from the end and she's like yeah those are my grandparents and he's like yeah you know they were just like he's like wait what'd you say (laughs) she's like yeah this is my this is my grandparents oh my god and he's like are you serious he's like we would have talked about that the whole time (laughs) he's like what (laughs) that's so crazy he was shocked he's like are you kidding me right now he's like i have to have you on again that's so funny he was like he was like he's like i'm even thinking about He's like, should we just keep going? He's like, <laughs> Meanwhile, it's like three going? hours. Yeah, like he was just like, should we just keep going? He should have. He so should have. 
That's crazy. Because she's like heard the story and everything. And she's yeah, heard of course. It right she from like grew mouth. up with that. Yeah, yeah. She like sees how they behave. Yeah, right? The night terror. She probably heard about it from her parents and stuff. So very interesting. Wow, stuff. that's crazy. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> interesting one. That Those, in my opinion, are the top ones. But they're not even like number one and two on this. You know, that first guy who has the inter intergalactic hookup, he's number one on this list. I found it a little bit more about that. Did you did you want to hear it? Yeah, yeah, please. Of so course. the the person he was brought in to impregnate okay. was an alien. Oh no. Yes. No. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> <laughs> do you want to hear the description? Yeah, please, of course. Okay. What? We um, all do. <laughs> He said she had a small pointed chin and large blue cat-like eyes. Okay. And the hair on her head was long and white, almost like platinum blonde. Ooh. But her underarm and downstairs hair were bright red. Okay. He said he was strongly attracted to the woman. What? And the two had Coitus. relations. Yes. Really? Yeah. He and did it. He it says during this act, he noted that the female did not kiss him, but instead nipped him on the chin nipped him on the chin like bit his chin and then when it was all over the female smiled at him rubbing her belly and gestured upwards and he took this to mean that she was going to raise their child in space so she went like this and went like yeah she went that this is going up yeah oh my god weird eh can you imagine that she got brought back to her planet and then she was like i'm a virgin and then she had a baby and oh that my baby, god and that was jesus. <laughs> that's that planet jesus right there yeah that's incredible yeah weird but uh, even like obviously i'm joking there but think about that like what yeah I don't know. That made <laughs> that's why it's number one weird. sorry sorry so yeah, that's they why missed it's a whole bunch one. of stuff in that article yeah right uh so that's why that one's number one that makes more sense and then think about that i don't know do you think that could happen I don't know. I you, you I think, don't think so. But the thing is, you you would you would do that if you had the ability, if you knew for some reason that these things could impregnate these things, you would just do that. Yeah, but like I'm like people like, do that for him. So he's being abducted, probably in a state of shock or fear or mm -hmm, both. Mm -hmm. Are you really looking to have? relations yeah. with yeah that's a true. thing that doesn't isn't even human yeah right that's crazy that is kind of crazy sucks that he doesn't go into her body what her body looked like because <laughs> that's the missing piece that's why you're asking this question right yeah the if, only she, if she thing... was like a natural bbl type of alien i'd I be like know. okay so I he was just, so he's weird. ready to go that's how guys are right Still you can't pass you can't pass that up but it also said, um, so when he was abducted, they took him to a room and they took samples of blood from his chin as well, which is weird because it said she bit him on the chin. Mm. So they took samples of blood from his chin and then he was taken to a room, left alone. He was stripped naked before he was put in the room and he was covered in gel. <laughs> and then some kind of gas was pumped into the room, which made oh. him violently ill. Okay. So maybe the gas is like a Viagra type thing. Yeah, it was like a little, you know, yeah. little knockout Loosen gas. it up a bit. You know, little, Co little Cosby, uh, little Cosby mist on him. <laughs> you know, just you know, get things going. Uh, and then he, that makes sense. Yeah, and then the female thing came in. That's wild. Yeah. But that that makes sense. It makes sense to me. It makes sense to me because if we were in a state, if the human race was in a state where we were dying off. And so many people have turned to the neural link. They got rid of their legs. They got rid of their body. They've merged with machines. They've done all this stuff. And then we realize like, oh, our biological selves were the thing that we needed the most. And we were so dumb to listen to this Elon Musk and this <laughs> Sam Altman and all these people. We were so dumb to listen to these people. And now we need biological stuff. Mm -hmm. But now we're machines. We've merged enough that we can travel the galaxy. We found a pairing we found species who we can actually procreate with mm -hmm. and rebuild our race with and we just need one or many i don't know but whatever <laughs> whatever we need we need it we would do that we would yeah. be like okay get him get him make sure he does it 
We would do that. Yeah, gross. We, we do <laughs> that. We do that right now. If there's like two rhinos that are like the last of their species, yes, we're like, nope. They have to. We have to get them to do it. True. We do that all day. But they're the same species. Yeah. <laughs> See, that's a little semantics. Semantics. <laughs> 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 no, yeah, so you're right, but I, I think I'm just saying if if we if we as people as a race were in that that desperate yeah, need, we would so. do that. I agree. We'd be like, okay, let's just get it done, and whatever comes out of it, that's just the new person. That's what they are now. Yeah, we'll just splice with this. Yeah, and we'll build it up. Weird. Because then it's like once we have that baby, because there's no biological people anymore. There's just like, you know, weird blue alien ladies. We would be like, okay, now we're just going to clone this, whatever she has. We're just going to clone over and over again. Mm-hmm. And then we're just, we're going to figure it out from there. But we just need one. We need one quick <laughs> before like we die out because this is getting crazy. Yeah. Yeah. That's weird. Right? Weird stuff. I don't know. What else even was on? What is, what else even matters after that one? <laughs> I know. That's I'm talking about Bar- Betty Hill and stuff. No. Should have just focused on that. The whole episode should have been about that guy. Wow. Should have found an interview with that guy. What else is there on this list? Um, there's the one number three. Number three was Betty, that about? Um, Andreas and Luca. Andreas and Luca, yeah. Yeah. It says... Um, so a few years after Betty and Barney Hill, um, in somewhere in Ashburnham, Massachusetts, yeah, stepped forward to claim she had been taken up by interstellar beings as well. Her cl- her case was closely examined by Mutual UFO Network founder and investigator Ray Fowler, who had her undergo hypnosis to verify her claims. She gave chilling details about how the beings were able to immobilize her entire family in or in order to take her and implant a foreign object in her skull she said they could talk to her but not with their mouths the woman even described moments of serene peacefulness and said the aliens told her the experiments they were conducting were to prepare for some kind of planetary revelation fowler spent almost a decade examining the case and concluded she was either the most accomplished liar and actress the world had ever seen or else she had really gone through the ordeal Hmm. again see that's the thing with all these stories as silly as it sounds you tell you tell someone that story 30 years ago and it sounds ridiculous Mm -hmm. but we have a guy right now who's trying to implant things into people's skulls yes right he's just also like couldn't they just like x-ray her and verify who the aliens? No, the people. Oh, the, uh, verify if anything's in her skull? Yeah. Mm, true. Never mind. Weird that doesn't say anything about that. <laughs> well, I mean, she'd have to submit to it, right? I guess. Maybe she'd just be like, no. They said no. Yeah. They, so it seems like the, like the first thing they should do, and this guy spent almost a decade taking a look at the case. Mm-hmm. Seems weird. Implant something in her skull, and then they could. And how funny is that? That's exactly what Elon Musk says. What talk without their mouth? Yeah, he's yeah. like, he's like, you're gonna be able to speak without <clears throat> speaking. And that's what you were just saying too, with the like translation. Yeah, that is just like in the room. Yeah, that's exactly what Elon Musk has been saying. Hmm. Wow. Maybe it is just Elon. Maybe all these stories are just Elon <laughs> and his family over time, just taking people under. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Do you think that one's real? Mm, no. 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 Nope. I think they're all real. I'm the opposite. I just think, you think they're all real. Yeah, I think they're all <laughs> real. I think they're all true. If there's I, like too obvious of a, a like a plot hole for me, then I'm like, nah. Yeah, with the skull. Yeah, the implant. It's true. But again, she would have to submit to it. Maybe she's just like, no, I, I won't guess. do that. But you think like, wouldn't you want it out? True. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. True. True. You're right. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I would. <laughs> yeah. 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 Well, maybe. I don't know. You know, what if they come back? Or if it, imagine like a, a planet that is so advanced that their technology is here considered biology. Mm-hmm. I was thinking about that. Like if they implanted something and it looked like bone, like against her skull or something. Or if it just looked like cells. Yeah. 
like they're just like oh this is what her brain looks like okay so in order for this to take perfectly we're just gonna recreate exactly this part of her brain and put that in there yeah you know maybe we would get to that point like we would get to that point as a species definitely yeah where we're recreating hearts and livers True. and stuff and it would be considered tech but it would be considered an organ you know biotech i guess all right let's read this uh this last one here the Alagosh waterway abduction most alien abduction stories whether they remain credible or not usually are missing an important element to tie it all together True. witnesses there you go yeah, the this famous case from 1976 involved four men who claimed to experience the same abduction a secret they almost took to their graves the men were fishing in a canoe in northern Maine when they saw a gleaming UFO with an 80-foot diameter and changing red, yellow, and green colors. Whoa. According to the men, the UFO swooped down and beamed them up with their canoe in a blinding light. They came to several hours later, not remembering anything after their abduction, but began to have frightening nightmares. Mm. They all underwent hypnosis and revealed their kidnappers were not from Earth. All of the men also took lie detector tests about their claims and passed. Wow. Interesting. Yeah, it's weird when it's like multiples. I think those are always, the most I believe believable. those more. Yeah. 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 They could get together and lie together, but then the lie detector test, like it's person, it's, it's possible for a person to pass a lie detector test, but then all of a sudden like four of you. Yeah, that'd you, be really and hard. And you all happen to be friends. You know? Yeah. And they all went like. <laughs> underwent hypnosis too yeah that's wild i i really do think things like that happen i really do i think it's not i don't think it's crazy at all to think that aliens exist Agreed. I, don't, I don't think it's i don't think it's even slightly ridiculous to think that aliens exist i think they exist yeah, i definitely think they exist like how could they not yeah and then if they do exist of course they're gonna probably do stuff to us if they're around yeah we would do stuff to anything we could. We do do stuff to anything we yeah, could. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I mean, and, and again, it's like uh, like that last episode we did with the uh, the CRISPR. We're talking about gene editing and stuff. What mm -hmm. that what that uh, Asian scientist did, Chinese scientist did. We would do the same thing, or uh, people in general would do the same thing if you could get like a hold of people from uncontacted tribes. Yeah. And, and probably do and just don't release that information to the public. True. Like if they can get a hold of, think about it. We have a certain DNA that is new based on everything that we've had to take, our epigenetics, what we're around, inhaling smoke, smog, all sorts of different things, alcohol. You go back to the uncontacted tribe, that's like more basic DNA. Yeah. Like their DNA is probably different. Like if there's any mutations in us. Yeah. From being around those environmental things. Yeah. True. True. And they're like the original. So if I just thought of that on a podcast, you think a scientist hasn't thought of that? <laughs> and been like, I want to see what theirs look like. Because yep. maybe I can Map think of a cure DNA. from this thing if I get theirs. True. You know? And then some shadow government type of person says, okay, mm -hmm. I'll get them. Here's your money. How many you want? You want six? I'll bring oh you six. <laughs> and now all of a sudden those uncontacted people are like, the aliens came. <laughs> aliens came and they took True. us on their ship and they took blood and this and that and it's like yeah i don't know i think i think uh i think it's true i do i think aliens just do stuff like that yeah i think so too i think some of those are true <laughs> man i i'm on i'm on the same page with you when you said you don't want the experience i don't want it you decided not to now. yeah as, as i'm thinking <laughs> about it i don't want that because you don't know what's going to happen and then afterwards you have to talk about it. No one's going to believe you. That's always a hard thing to deal with. Yeah. And then you're like the alien weirdo for the rest of your life. Yeah. You're, while yeah. dealing with that experience. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. So I don't think I would want that. I don't think so. No. Because then, then the only way it becomes worth it is it has to become so, so spectacular that it's book worthy and movie worthy. Mm -hmm. And if it's those things, then you like went through the ringer. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I would, of course, believe you because I yeah. know you. Yeah. Is there anybody else in your life that you would just completely believe if that happened to them? Yeah. <laughs> Maybe I have a problem because I'm thinking of like so many people. Really? Yeah, I believe most people. My list, I feel like, is very small. Uh, if they if they were like, I got abducted by an alien. Yeah. I Well, I mean, if anybody said that, I'd be like, tell me. 
I guess. It all depends on the story. Tell me how that worked. And if they're like acting weird otherwise. Yeah. I'd be like, what happened? What happened? Tell me about it. I don't know. I think I'd believe anybody. Really? I I think I would hear out anybody. I would hear the story. I'd be like, yeah, tell me. Tell me what you saw. (laughs) Sure. Things are different. You know, you you, you do enough psychedelics. You're just like, you're really open. Hmm. You're just really open. You're like, I've seen an entity under under the influence so maybe you saw one and you weren't under the influence true let me hear what you have to say (laughs) you know i don't know what else you got no that's it subscribe guys subscribe to the channel it helps us tremendously we're going for a hundred thousand hit up i am coach like the episode because that helps us tremendously as well and other than that we are out do not get abducted while (laughs) we're gone bye bye